Hi, it's Lori with Alga Credit Union, working with you to become financially fit. Today, we're gonna to talk about credit cards. When are credit cards helpful? Well, credit cards can help you build your credit. If you're building your credit and getting that score up higher, then that's one thing that's gonna help you with a lot of other things that you might need your credit score for. That's another seminar. You'll have to watch the credit score seminar for that. If you're paying your credit card off monthly, then you're not paying any interest. So basically you've borrowed money interest-free and you can gain all of the card's rewards. Many credit cards will have cash back rewards or they'll give you points that turn into free gift cards and things like that. So basically by using the, their credit card, you're able to reap the benefits of those swipes. This helps both you and the credit card company. So this is when using a credit card can be helpful to you. I want you to be aware of when credit cards might tempt you to spend more than what you have. So when you're out and you need to purchase something, the temptation might be to put it on the card because you know you'll pay it back. But when you're doing that over and over and over again, you might get yourself into a situation where you have more on your credit card than what you can pay back. You also wanna be aware of the tactics. Once you have a credit card, there's no need to continue to get more. You don't need to see how many you can get or how quickly you can get them. Getting too much too quick can hurt your credit score. So you wanna be aware of all the tactics that the credit card companies use to try to get you to be enticed in. While you're making that purchase at the store, I won't name any store names because they all do it, they'll say, would you like to open one of our credit cards today? We'll give you 30% off in the store today, or even worse, only 10% off in the store today if you open the card up. Well, 10% of, let's say, a $200 purchase is only $20. So $20 in the big scheme of things probably isn't going to help you that much. I once had a store ask me if I would open a credit card. My total purchase was $20 and they were trying to entice me with a 10% discount. When I let the store clerk know that that was only $2 off, that really wasn't worth opening a credit card for, nor was it something I wanted to do, they had a hard time understanding it. But you're going to need to process that for yourself because people making sales are going to try to be pushy and you want to be careful about how many you get. Not only will you get those in person, but you'll be getting these enticing offers by mail. They'll say you're pre-approved and you're also gonna get the enticing offers in your email box. So be careful, beware of getting too many. The next thing we're gonna talk about are interest rates. So if you're paying it off in full, I guess the interest rate shouldn't matter a whole lot, but credit card interest rates are high. Usually they range from 9.9% .9 all the way up to 29.9%. If you do choose to get a credit card, it's smarter to be looking for one at a credit union where you can get closer to the 9.9%. If you're getting offers via mail and email and offers via store credit cards, you're probably looking at a lot of interest rates that are 19.9 all the way to 29.9%. If you ever did use your credit card for an emergency that you were gonna try to pay back over time, that would be a really high interest rate to continue to pay back. Let's go through a little bit of that as well. Some people like to say, no, my interest rate's 0% or 4.9%. I want you to understand those are just what we call introductory offers. Introductory offers are for a small temporary period of time that they'll give you a credit card bonus. That's your perk. That's your tactic, I guess you will, on that card. And that's when the period ends for that six month, 12 month or 18 month period of time, then your interest rate goes back to the normal rate. So let's talk a little bit about how credit cards work. If you pay the balance in full every single month, you will never pay interest. That's when you are using your credit cards to the best extent for you. You're racking in the points, you're increasing your score and you pay no interest. The credit card company still does benefit because every time you make a swipe, the merchant where you use the card 
is paying for each use you use to the credit card company. So they do get a little help by you using their credit card. But the best thing is for you to get the rewards of those swipes without having to pay any interest. Now, let's say you really got yourself in a bind and you needed to borrow $1,000 for a temporary period of time. The very best thing to do would be to go to your credit union and get a $1,000 personal loan for maybe 12 months. I'd like to give you the example of when you might use a $1,000 credit card and let it benefit you to pay it back over time. Let's say your option was to go to a payday cash store advance lender. What they like to do at those stores is give you a $600 loan and it's due to be paid back within two weeks. And they'll give it to you for the small fee of $76. So you borrow 600, you come back two weeks later and you owe 676 or $679, depending on their fee, somewhere between 76 and $79. Well, if you paid back your $600 in a two week time period with your next paycheck, guess what's gonna happen? And they count on this. You're gonna short yourself by that $679, which means you're gonna turn around and get another $600 loan. So two weeks later, you come back and you've guessed it. You owe that $76 fee again. Within a matter of just four borrows, so that's just eight weeks, two months, you've paid that $76 fee four times, four times. So you're really in for well over $300 in fees in just two months. So let's look at the credit card option for something like that. If you borrowed $1,000 on your credit card and you couldn't pay it in full, the best way to go about doing it is pushing yourself to pay it off as fast as you're able to with the paychecks that are coming. So let's say the minimum payment on that credit card was 30. I would encourage you not to pay the minimum payment, but pay more. So if you paid $123 every single month until that card was paid off, let's see what would happen. So look at this example. Month one, you get the bill for that $1,000 that you borrow. You receive the bill 30 days later, approximately. Instead of paying that $30 minimum payment, we're gonna pay 123. Well, your interest for that full month on your 1,000 minus the 123 is $19. So 1,000 minus the 123 plus adding your $19 fee back in there, brings you to $896 running balance. The next month you pay 123 again instead of your $30 minimum payment. Well, look what happens. Your interest went down that month because your balance was lower. You only paid 16. Let's shoot down to month nine. By the time you get down to month nine, your running balance for due was 222.93. You paid the 123. They're only gonna charge you on month nine, $2.17 cents interest, bringing your running balance to 102. The next month, you don't owe the 123 because you only owe 102.10. You can pay it off in full on month 10. So in that 10 month period of time, that $1,000 that you borrowed on your credit card would have cost you $86.10 in interest. So your total paid back for that thousand was $1,086.10 and you had it paid off in 10 months. That's when you do use it as a loan, but in a wise manner. You'll also notice that in this scenario, we didn't continue to use the card every single month and run that balance back up to a thousand. We stopped with the one purchase that was the emergency. And after that, we paid it in full every single month as much as we could with that allotment that we had set up for ourselves. Mentally, we said, I'm going to pay 123 a month so I could get it paid off in 10 months. Let me show you when credit cards work against you. So in this scenario, again, I'm not going to push that credit card balance back up every single month. I'm just saying a one-time purchase of let's say around $1,000. So let's look at this example. If you actually only paid the minimum payment, at $1,000, a minimum payment would be 30. As you watch in this example, as your running balance goes down, by probably around month 38, you'll be down to a minimum payment of $25. And about month 53, your minimum payment is 20. So notice that as you go down too. 
what happens is paying that minimum payment every single month would take you in the same exact scenario, just paying that minimum payment, 72 months to pay off. So not the 10 month scenario like previously, we're paying the minimum payment. After 72 payments or six years, paying back that 25.99% interest on a $1,000 purchase, you would have paid $1,855. So you've paid $855 extra because you just paid that minimum payment monthly. That's when a credit card can be used against you because it's tricking your mind to only pay that small minimum payment instead of a bigger payment and it takes a lot longer to pay off. Well, somebody who would be using a $1,000 limit or maybe even a bigger limit, but they had put a $1,000 purchase on, if they didn't stop and they started racking that credit card up and spending more and more and more. Let me give you one more example. Imagine that you racked your credit card up to a $10,000 balance, or imagine that you've got several credit cards and they racked up to about a $10,000 combined balance paying only the minimum payment, which is rather hefty because you would be paying about $300 a month on a $10,000 running balance, that would take somebody 30 years to pay off. Over that 30 year period of time, paying the minimum payment, that would be 34,492.27 paid back over a 10 year period of time. So your 34,000 minus that $10,000 you borrowed means $24,492.27 is interest. That's a lot of money to be paying back to that credit card company. Let's double that figure and see how long it would take you. On a $20,000 running balance on your credit card at a 25.99%, it would take someone 37 years to pay back all of that balance at a minimum payment. Paying back 20 grand would actually amount to over those 37 years, $70,488.92. That means $50,492.27 is the amount you paid back in interest. That's a lot of money. That's when credit cards work against you. They make your mind think that you can keep spending and every time you slide that card, the balance racks up. You never wanna get yourself in that kind of credit card trouble because it's almost unrealistic to think that you'll be able to pay it back and still make your monthly bills. That's when credit cards will work against you. The best way, let me reiterate again, is when you use them responsibly, never spending more than you can pay back in that, that very next billing cycle when the payment comes or the credit card statement comes, you're able to make your payment in full. Thank you for watching another moment with Lori Hawk at Elga Credit Union, working with you to make you financially fit. Make it a great day. We're